Alright, what's up everyone? Today we'll be going through the A perms. So before we get started, I want to briefly mention that there are two different types of A perms. They have separate different algorithms, but the algorithms are actually pretty similar. So the first algorithm I'll show is the one for the AA perm. It goes like this. The other algorithm here is for the AB perm, and it is shown as follows. So in terms of recognition, A perms are usually fairly straightforward to recognize. The most prominent feature of an A perm is this 2 by 2 block on the side here. With both A perms, it's important to hold this block so it is at the front left side. After holding it in this orientation, the way to tell which A perm it is is to look for the headlights. So in this case, we have headlights at the back, which means that this is the AA perm and it uses the first algorithm that I've shown. This, however, is the other A perm. But from this angle, it's still recognized by the 2x2 block here at the front left. But instead of having headlights at the back, we now have headlights on the right hand side. So this is the AB perm, and it is solved by using the second algorithm that I've shown. However, as you may have noticed, it is quite inefficient to be always looking at the back or at other sides when recognizing PLL. And to be honest, it's not actually necessary to look at the back or any other side other than this angle from the 2x2 block. So an easy way to recognize which A perm it is from this angle is that we can recognize where the opposite colors are. So always look at the edge piece and the corner piece. So if the edge piece and corner piece are opposite colors on the right hand side, like in this case, it is the AA perm when the headlights are at the back. Similarly for this case, we can still recognize the edge and corner piece next to each other here and we notice that the opposite colors are here on the left side. So this means that this is the AB perm with headlights on the right side. So the benefit of looking at the colors here rather than looking around for the headlights is that you don't need to spin the cube around for PLL recognition, which is a lot faster because doing this will take up a lot of time rather than just recognizing it from this angle. Recognizing it based on opposite colors is definitely something that you might have to take some time to get used to. It might take some practice as well, but in the long run, it will save you a lot of time during PLL recognition. So at this stage, you might be wondering, is there a good way to remember these algorithms? Because when you first learn them, they do look like a bunch of RUD moves. Uh, but there is actually nice ways to remember these algorithms, so I'll be going through them right now. So for this one, once again, this is the AA perm and is recognized with the headlights at the back, or you could recognize it as opposite colors on the right side here. So with this algorithm, uh, as with all our APERM algorithms, you have to rotate down to face the white side before doing the algorithm. So this rotation down in a solve can be done quite smoothly with a regrip. And then once your hand is in this position, you're ready to start the algorithm. So the algorithm starts with an R prime U R prime. Nice way to remember it is that when you regrip your left hand, your right hand is still up here. So you can re just remember the hand movement. So you can pull back the right side like this, U layer towards the left side, and then right side down again. Now after these first three moves, it's time for the D2. So usually it's your left hand that's in the good position to do the D2. So once again, double flick. I'll go through the finger tricks for the double flick later on in the video. After that, right side back up, U layer back over right side back down for another D2. Finally, at this stage, you don't even remember, need to remember it, but it's an R2 to finish off the algorithm. The AB perm can be remembered in a similar way. Once again, the algorithm starts by facing the white side or the bottom side, whichever color that you're using. 
I'm doing white cross, so I usually just face the white side. So once again, you start off re-gripping your left hand, that will smoothly transition you to face the correct direction, and your right hand is should be up here ready to do the R2. So once again, the AB perm starts with an R2, so you bring your right side all the way down like this. Next up, that's followed by a D2, which is done with the left hand. Now, it's followed by R, right side up, U layer over, right side back down, followed by a D2. Finally, right side up, U layer back over, and then right side up again, which solves the cube. So one of the most important finger tricks in the A perm is the D2 flicks at the bottom here. Uh, they are used quite often in these A perm algorithms and it's usually done with the left hand, the hand that you re-grip at the start of the algorithm. Um, these flicks are usually done by ring finger followed by pinky. And this is a really awkward move to do at the start so it will take some practice for sure. So what I recommend is that you don't even do it in an algorithm, you just hold the cube like this with your thumb at the front, middle finger at the back and just do D2s like this until you get the hang of it. Once you feel familiar with this move, then start doing it in an actual algorithm. For example, in this algorithm, practice it during the algorithm. Take it slow to begin with, make sure you get comfortable with the movement. And then once you feel comfortable with that, then you can start speeding it up. So I know some people prefer to do just two D flicks with your ring finger twice uh, instead of a D2 double flick. Um, to be honest, it will still work, but um, once again, if you're trying to you know, break some time barriers, trying to get faster, I do recommend learning D2s. They are quite useful, not only in A perms, but um, with building the cross as well when you're aligning the D layer with a D2, it's faster than doing two D moves. Um, and it's overall just a good finger trick to know. So um, I definitely recommend practicing those. If you're doing two D flicks uh, separately right now, just to remember the algorithm, that's fine. But just keep in mind that sooner or later, it will be recommended that you learn the D2 double flicks and use those instead. So I also want to mention that there are alternative APERM algorithms that you can use. So one of the more popular ones is the one that you rotate upwards like this. But keep in mind that when you use the one that rotates towards the yellow layer, your 2x2 block must be at the back left side instead of the front left side. So just as an example, um, I have here the AA perm and if I wanted to use the algorithm that rotates upwards, uh, it would go something like this. And the similar thing can be done for the AB perm as well. Personally, I don't use these algorithms that rotate upwards. I still use the ones that rotate towards the bottom. But if you're interested in learning these alternative algorithms instead, if you don't for whatever reason like the uh, ones that rotate downwards, then I'll put these all these algorithms in the description. Uh, you guys can choose whichever one suits you better. So one more thing I want to mention is that I got uh, quite a few comments in my original APERM PLL tutorial to just do the wide T perm. Now, there are a few problems with that. First of all, T perms are quite fast, but they're not fast if the R moves are replaced with the wide R moves. And the reason for that is that it's a big layer that you're turning. And secondly, um, A perms are quite fast if you do them the regular way. Doing this is actually more moves than the regular A perms. Uh, so just as an example of what I mean, with a wide T perm, it would be T perm, but with all the R moves replaced with a wide R move. So just as an example, I have here the AA perm, and if I wanted to do the wide T perm algorithm, it would still solve the case, but it would go something like this. So as seen, it still works, but it's really not efficient at all, and I definitely don't recommend you using that. And besides, it only solves the AA perm. Um, it doesn't actually solve the AB perm, at least not in the same way. You can mirror it with your left hand, but imagine doing a T perm with your left hand that involves wide R moves. I'm not even going to attempt it because I'm probably going to mess it up. 
I wouldn't recommend you learning it either, it's just not an efficient way to go about it. Learn the proper APERMs, they are a lot faster. So finally, once again, quickly want to mention AUF for APERMs. AUF for APERMs are recognized by the 2x2 two two block, alright? So not the headlights. So it's always, for APERMs at least, it's the 2x2 two two blocks. So if the 2x2 two two blocks are matched up with the colors around it, then you got no AUF. So in this case, we got no AUF. However, here's an example where we do have an AUF and once again, it's recognized by the 2x2 two two block. It is not matching the colors around it. Instead, it's actually opposite colors. So that means the block actually belongs on the other side. So that obviously means that the AUF is a U2. So immediately after the algorithm, I know I'll have to do a U2 to solve the cube. And finally, I want to mention the finger tricks for an APERM algorithm that has a U prime AUF. So if you can't tell what the problem is as of now, that's fine, but I'll do the algorithm and at the end I'll point out what the problem is with this algorithm with the U prime AUF. So after doing the algorithm, it would look something like this. Alright, so here's the problem that we don't actually have a nice sort of setup to do the U prime. So we could first of all, the obvious thing would be to regrip our left hand to do the U prime, but obviously regripping at the last moment for AUF is definitely not efficient. So there are quite a few special finger tricks that you could use to solve this particular case efficiently. So the first way of doing this particular finger trick, and it's the one that I use, is to use my index finger and to push over the layer like this at the end of the algorithm. Together it would look something like this. However, if you don't like using this index finger push move, um, because it can be a bit inconsistent sometimes, another way is to at the end here, use your right left hand and drag the U layer over, sort of with your ring finger like this. So just as an example, it would look something like this. So yeah, definitely try and use some of those finger tricks um, at the end of the algorithm when you're doing AUF. The other types of AUF, such as just U's or U2's, can be done quite straightforward with your right hand because it would be in a good position to do either of those moves. It's just the U prime moves will be a bit of a problem um, if you don't use any of these finger tricks that I mentioned. So that's it for the APERM tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, like the video if you learned something new, subscribe if you want to see more similar videos, and share these videos with people you may know, friends or family who would like to learn full PLO. It helps grow the channel and I really appreciate everyone's support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.